Hey guys, what's up? It's Scoundrel here, and today we are going to be covering power spikes in Vainglory. Yes, Quatrefoix has already published a video on this, and you guys can go to his channel and have a look at it. I will also link the video in the description below. Uh, but I thought, because I'd already basically done this video by the time that it came out, and I wasn't aware that he was doing it, it was a good idea to maybe just publish them both, so you guys have a resource to essentially learn from both of us, and maybe we'll cover things in different ways, and we'll be able to cover, th cover things in more depth across both videos. So when it comes to power spikes, in general we're talking about two things. We're talking about level power spikes, which can be like level 2, level 6, level 8 on different heroes. But we're also talking about things like item power spikes. Uh, and the most common examples of item power spikes are things like an aftershock on an aftershock jungler, or a breaking point on a breaking point focused carry. So these are the, the generic two sets of power spikes that we talk about. There are more power spikes when it comes to infusions, and infusions kind of play on the current power spikes that you already have. But to make it simple, and for 99% of your learning, you need to know about level power spikes, and you need to know about item power spikes. If you follow my 60 second hero guides, I generally tend to put the power spikes in at the bottom on the first screen. This just represents when your hero is strong. Power spikes are there to represent a point in the game that your hero has hit a, a break point where they are going to be doing way more damage or going to be way tankier or are just going to be generally more useful than they were before. And that is what a power spike is. It's a point in the game that you can abuse to try and get ahead because this is the point in the game where your hero is very strong. So we're going to talk about Samuel as the first hero is an example to demonstrate power spikes. Samuel has a unique set of power spikes in the sense that he's one of these heroes that spikes very early on and very late into the game as well, and that's a combination of both his level and item spikes. His first level spike is level 2, believe it or not, really early on into the game, and that is simply because of the combination of his abilities. The fact that his abilities interact together means that as soon as you unlock them both, you're going to get a power spike over enemy heroes, because it's likely that the way that your Malice and Verdict and Drifting Dark interact with each other is going to be better in a skirmish, or better in an engage or trade, than your opposition, who don't really always have that kind of interaction between abilities. The next power spike is at level 6, where he gets access to his ultimate, meaning that he can control the pace of teamfights and skirmishes, also makes him good in siege scenarios, and can also disengage very heavily. It opens up a lot of utility for Samuel. Now we're going to talk about item spikes, and Samuel spikes with a couple of items in the game right now, but the examples that I'm going to give you are Dragon's Eye and Clockwork. The Dragon's Eye spike, which is often Samuel's first item in the game, allows him to really make use of these kits to the absolute fullest potential. Samuel's kit is supposed to be a sustain heavy kiting kit, which makes him very, very good at using Dragon's Eye and building stacks with it. No matter how many stacks you now need to gain on Dragon's Eye, Samuel is designed to be a sustained damage fighter, so Dragon's Eye is a really good item for him in general. The Clockwork comes in a little bit later into the game, where you get a mix of both a level spike and an item spike. Clockwork allows him to use the reduced cooldown on Drifting Dark, as well as the extended duration on it, and it basically allows him to have an almost 100% uptime on, up on Drifting Dark and Malice and Verdict, which is really what you want as a Samuel. You want to have these two abilities comboing together as much as physically possible. So now that you've overdrived your B and you have the extended duration on it, and you have that clockwork in tow, you only have about three and a half seconds between every time that you can use Drifting Dark, meaning this makes Samuel very, very powerful in the late game engages, and that's because of that clockwork. You add Halcyon Charges into the mix, and it comes off cooldown even more readily, making Samuel even more powerful in the late game. So I hope you guys get a little bit of insight into what I mean by level spike, item spike, and overall a power spike. The little example on Samuel is unique to Samuel. He spikes very early on, but then a combination of both his items and his abilities allows him to be a big threat in the late game as well. He's one of these heroes that actually has a really good early game and doesn't really drop at any point at all. Like, most heroes generally tend to spike when they overdrive their first ability at level 8, but honestly, Samuel's overdrive on his Malice and Verdict doesn't really gain him that much extra than he didn't already have, so Samuel doesn't really spike that hard then. Samuel's main power spikes at level 2, level 6, and level 12 when he gets that that overdrive on his Drifting Dark because of how much extended duration it grants you. And he obviously has those level spikes that we talked about previously. But you might say to me, well, Excaltrul, surely every hero spikes at level 6 because they get access to their ultimate. But honestly, not every ultimate in the game is a massive power spike for a hero. We're going to use this next example to explain what I mean. So Celeste is a different hero when it comes to power spikes. She actually doesn't really power spike 
at all until level eight. Now, I know you might say, oh, but the combination between her heliogenesis and her core collapse means you can land a supernova, but Celeste isn't really going to be killing anyone at level two. Like, she's not one of those heroes that's got insane damage at level two. Her energy costs are quite high. She really isn't an early spiking hero. I mean, Celeste has always been known as a late game hero, but it is because her power spikes come later into the game. Power spikes kind of define at what point a hero is good, whether they're an early game hero or whether they're a late game hero or somewhere in between. So you're not really going to be killing anyone crazy at level two with Celeste. Yeah, you can stun. Great. Yeah, you can maybe set up ganks and stuff, but it's not like her herself becomes incredibly powerful at level two. And it's not like she comes becomes incredibly powerful at level 6 either. No, because her first ultimate doesn't really do that much. You know, it's it's a 3 star uh, cross map ultimate, doesn't do an insane amount of damage. No, her ultimate becomes more powerful later on. The first level spike that Celeste has is when she gets to overdrive her heliogenesis. And that is simply because of the extended range. This makes Celeste go from a shorter range mage to a long range ballista. A trebuchet of vainglory. It's it's a very strong powerful spike for her at level 8. And she often combos that with item spikes as well. Because Celeste is a carry that is quite item dependent too. She's got very high CP scaling ratios, especially on her supernova. Two of the item spikes that work really well for Celeste is really any item plus clockwork. I chose Eve of Harvest here because this is a pretty standard two item build for Celeste. But really any item plus clockwork is good. It allows Celeste to have some CP behind her, and it gives her access to Clockwork, which is really what makes her very, very powerful. Celeste, when she has Clockwork, means that she can essentially spam Heliogenesis every 1.2 seconds or something stupid like that. It means that she becomes a a long-range, teamfight control, high-damage monster, and that is because of the access she gets to that overdriven ability. This is the first level spike that Celeste has, and it's actually arguably more important than her item spikes as well. You'd say this is probably the key point at which Celeste starts to come online in a game. However, she does need more than those two items to get to really her late game prowess. Celeste is kind of a four item CP carry. And what I'm going to explain is again, towards the late game, how her item spikes come together with her next level spike, which is level 12, to really make her work. So then we look at the late game and Celeste now gets access to her third level ultimate. She gets extra stars. It can be massive team fight impact and combining that with Eve of Harvest can give you a massive burst of regen in a team fight. You then combo with that with at level 12. You might be getting towards access of four items, four CP items, and suddenly you're going to be start dishing out ridiculous damage in team fights from a very long range with a huge impact team fight ultimate. This is late game Celeste power spike. This is her combination of item spike plus level spike. And that's what I mean when we talked about it with Samuel. He spikes in the late game because of his combination of abilities and, and items. Well, Celeste does exactly the same thing. But she just takes longer to come online than Samuel. Samuel spikes very early and stays consistently good throughout the game. Celeste is okay early. Not great. She's really not a super powerful early game hero. But then she ramps up like a monster into the late game and becomes almost indomitable once you get towards your level 12 and your 3 to 4 items. I thought this would be a good video to tie in a little bit about infusions. I will do a separate video. I know I've been getting a lot of people asking me about this. But there are three situations that you bought infusions in the past. One, because it's late game and you had nothing else to buy. Two, because it's late game and you had to buy one to keep up with your enemy. Or three, to complement power spikes. Infusions should ideally complement power spikes. It's why you saw a lot of pro players, um, for instance, Aftershock junglers, buying infusions around the level 6 mark with an Aftershock power spike. Especially Koshka, for instance. You see a lot of Koshka players buy a crystal infusion at level 6 to complement the fact that they're level 6 and have yummy cabinet frenzy, and they probably have their Aftershock completed by now. The reason that they did it is because they were able to force a situation where they could make use of their infusion. In solo queue, that's a lot harder to do, especially now that 5v5 is going to be the main game mode. It's going to be a lot harder to force the issue when it comes to making use of an infusion in solo queue, which is why I always told my solo queue players just to finish your items first, because they will get you a more consistent power spike than an infusion would. If you buy an infusion and then don't fight anybody for the duration, you've wasted that infusion. And as I was saying earlier, it's harder in 5v5 to capitalize on early power spikes with infusions. In 3v3, you could force a team fight by going for goldmine, by all three of you attacking the turret, by even just walking into the enemy jungle and trying to take the crystal miner. 
So you could very easily force the issue in 3v3 when it came to early infusions. In 5v5, that's not the case. You've got five lanes to work with. Global objectives don't spawn until roughly seven minutes. The jungle shop isn't that hotly contested. So therefore, early power spikes that you often see in 3v3, like level six and level five or whatever, they're not going to get an infusion to go with them anymore because it's just so difficult to make use of it efficiently. Maybe junglers who are ganking a lot think they can get a little bit out of an early infusion, but it's not going to be a common practice, I feel, in 5v5 because it's just way more difficult to get an advantage with an infusion. And an infusion is a big investment to not get an advantage out of. So in general, learning a hero's power spike comes from a lot of practice. You need to learn to practice that hero. You'll naturally start to understand when that hero becomes strong and you'll get used to understanding which items also give you a major advantage too. If you're stuck and don't know how to find a hero power spike, a lot of guides will tell you. Uh, my 60 second hero guides usually have it down at the bottom of the first screen. A rule of thumb is that level spikes very rarely change. Item spikes generally tend to, depending on how items fluctuate as well. I hope you guys found this interesting and I hope it was informative. I will see you next time.